promise everyone um, more on 81s. And this is our next question from the audience, uh, which relates to the uh, more controversial matters arising from the Credit Suisse rescue. Um, that question is, uh, what is our view around the treatment of Credit Suisse's 81 bonds? Uh, do we think writing them down to zero is the wrong outcome, regardless of the regulator's legal ability to do so? What do you think, Bill? Well, the Swiss regulator was perfectly within their right to uh, write down $17 billion worth of additional tier ones, whilst ensuring that shareholders received uh, $3.25 billion. Uh, this was because, you know, they, a viability event was triggered when the bank received what we would like to say is an irrevocable commitment of public support. Uh, in, in, in essence, the Swiss authorities provided $25 billion uh, of Swiss France protection and, and this showed an extraordinary support to the public sector. So uh, in, actually, in the terms of the addition, additional tier notes, tier one notes, it actually said um, the notes may be subject to a write down. Uh, note holders may lose their entire amount of their investment in the notes. Uh, and that may occur even if shares remain outstanding. I mean, it couldn't have been clearer. Um, however, the market convention is that equity is supposed to be riskier than, than debt, than additional tier one debt. And it was an obvious breach of the hierarchy of claims, no doubt about it. In this sense, it was the wrong outcome, even if the Swiss regulator had the legal right. The problem with conventional wisdom is that it is often invariably wrong. It's grounded in, in what you'd like to think is common sense, um, um, but consensus thinking in some ways undermines our capacity to use critical thinking. Uh, and in this case, investors should have really read the terms uh, more specifically you know, Switzerland is not Europe. A lot of American investors think Switzerland's Europe. It's not. Switzerland is not the European Union. It's not the UK. Uh, and they have both separately regulated regimes. Uh, and both of those jurisdictions said, confirmed that they would respect the hierarchy of claims. And that's obviously helped to allay uh, investor fears in those regimes. However, it is incumbent on investors to do the due diligence as the additional tier one note sold, I think last year, uh, delivered a return almost something like 9.75%, um, which at that time was almost three times as much as the dividend yield on Credit Suisse's uh, shares. Uh, to me, that was a red flag. Um, buyers beware, caveat emptor and all that. Uh, it's a familiar phrase that investors should know about yeah what do you think john well i do think it's uh, it's an incredibly important and interesting episode in the history of bank capital um and and pro you know probably the salient uh thing to have happened since um well, certainly one of them since the financial crisis I, I i do think there's there are big questions to to answer for policymakers and the market about about how these various tiers of of bank capital work whether they're actually useful and so on, um, you know that the, the these instruments can are supposed to work by by absorbing losses, um, and and you know enabling the institution to keep going, and the um, you know it, it was but what actually happens when there's a crisis is that people have to think on their feet and they have to uh, deal with a very ugly difficult situation and put out a fire as quickly as possible. And the, and the Swiss authorities obviously took the view that you shouldn't uh, burn up Credit Suisse's equity. And I think the, the, the damage that would have been done to sort of general confidence in the market and, uh, you know, the Swiss financial system had that happened uh, w w would have been worse. And therefore, you can totally understand why they um, uh, decided to keep the equity whole. Now, the, you know, you then get the European and UK regulators coming in and saying, well, we wouldn't do that. You know, we would we would burn up the equity first and then the 81. But it's difficult to imagine them sort of being willing to to take that, that severe a step. And then so that that implies, therefore, that that 81, you know, is isn't probably that useful as a as a as a loss absorber. Yeah, I think, I mean, clients would agree with both really. I mean, on face value, it's very clear that there was no, it doesn't seem to be any problem with what the Swiss have done from terms of the mm. terms of the notes. And any investor that got burned really probably should have read the docs. Um, 
simple as that. Um, I, I think one thing that we sometimes hear about, especially when talking about things like the 81 market, um, corporate hybrids, I guess, is another one. But, you know, callable securities of this nature is that investors get, tend to get very upset when their expectations aren't met, even mm. though the issuer, mm. or in this case, the regulator, is acting perfectly well within its rights. And I think to your point, John, you're right. You have to look at the... Uh, look at it as perhaps the lesser of two evils, really. If, if it is right that we go by convention rather than what's in the dock, say, then you still have to go by what would cause the system the most damage. And probably, you know, some holders of some 81 paper getting wiped out is, is probably a lot less damaging overall than um, inflicting equity losses upon, you know, the whole of, whole of Switzerland and uh, whoever else hold, held Credit Suisse shares. And, you know, I guess probably the further contagion that may well have spread from that situation anyway um i think, I think um, these hybrid capital layers are they are very much based on um sort of fitting a square pig peg in a round hole right or yeah. or you know believe making fish flesh right something has to has to be debt and equity at the same time and the, those are fundamentally quite different and and the investors want it to be debt like and the issuer and the regulators want it to be equity like and you know the 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 chance of people sort of believing what they want um and then being disappointed is is pretty high 